Having daily pain is overwhelming. Just living life can be so uncomfortable and trying to get help for it can feel like you are being called an outright liar. I've had many, many, many conversations with people who live with daily pain. Some, I hope, have been healing, but some, I have to admit, have been full of friction. So today, let's talk about what we know about the pain of fibromyalgia. How can you tell if your pain is related to fibro and how can you talk about it with your doctor so that you get the help you deserve? So stick around. Fibromyalgia is a clinical syndrome that is characterized by widespread musculoskeletal pain and a collection of associated symptoms, things like fatigue, sleep disturbances, mood disorders, and brain fog. The term and concept of fibromyalgia has been on quite the journey and has only recently really gained widespread acknowledgement that yes, it's a thing. And let me just get this out of the way up front. Fibromyalgia is not some sort of trash can diagnosis. It is not what a doctor will say when they don't know what is wrong with you. True, it is a diagnosis of exclusion, meaning you need to do tests to figure out something else like lupus or thyroid disease isn't the actual problem. But fibro is real, and more importantly, the pain of fibromyalgia is real. Part of the reason it took so long for the establishment and many individual doctors to acknowledge that fibromyalgia is real is we didn't understand how this pain develops. When we cut our skin or break our bones or stub our toe, we develop acute pain, otherwise known as nociceptive pain. Nociceptive pain is a consequence of some sort of injury. It tends to be localized and it's easy to describe and it's easy to see. The pain of fibromyalgia is not nociceptive pain. We have a new term for the pain of fibro called nociplastic pain. Nociplastic pain is the result of a dysregulated nervous system. Imbalanced and uncoordinated neurotransmitters result in an amplified pain signal that then results in a hypersensitive nervous system that is specifically hypersensitive to pain. Now, just a quick anatomy and physiology lesson. Our nervous system is made up of two parts, the central nervous system, which includes our brain and our brain stem, and the peripheral nervous system, which includes all the nerves of our body. Our nerves talk to each other via chemicals that flow from one nerve to another, and these chemicals are called neurotransmitters. Examples of neurotransmitters include things that you may have heard of, like serotonin or norepinephrine or dopamine. Okay, back to the video. So what does nociplastic pain look like in real life? To talk about nerves and neurotransmitters is one thing, but what can this look like in you? Nociplastic pain or fibro pain is the kind of pain that doesn't make logical sense. It's not related to a cut or an injury, it's just there. It's there even if you've done nothing that should cause pain. It is pain that occurs on both sides of the body, above and below the waist. It's described as deep and aching, although I have also heard it described as burning, stabbing, or it can be associated with numbness. Why did I get fibromyalgia? How did this happen? It is such a common question and one that we only recently have been able to answer, at least partially. There are two predominant ways nociplastic pain develops. The first is called a top-down mechanism. Pain signaling in our nervous system doesn't just go one way. So for example, from the stubbed toe to our brain. Our brain also sends a stop pain signal from our brain down to our toe. Well, if our brain doesn't do a good job of sending that stop signal down to the body, 
The pain from our toe, I'm sticking to this stubbed toe example, keeps coming, yelling pain, 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 even when the actual stubbing action has stopped. This top-down mechanism seems to have a genetic component and it's theorized to be the reason things like fibromyalgia can run in families. The second way is called a bottom-up mechanism. This can happen when the painful stimulus is ongoing. So this persistent pain stimulus causes the local nerves to reorganize so that they just keep sending the pain stimulus to the brain on repeat. This is what is theorized to cause fibromyalgia in those with autoimmune conditions such as RA or lupus. Unchecked joint inflammation can reach a tipping point that leads to this nerve reorganization and thus a persistent pain signal is sent to the brain. So even after controlling the inflammation, pain can still be felt. Now, I love giving you guys some things to think about yourself and to then bring to your doctors to continue the conversation. Getting someone to listen to you when you have chronic pain and finding a path towards relief can be a challenge. There are many reasons why elements of our traditional medical system have failed those with chronic pain and thankfully, the ship is starting to get steered back on track. The first step is opening the door to discuss fibro with your doctor. Could you be experiencing fibromyalgia? Do you have widespread pain that can't be explained by an activity or an injury? Remember, widespread pain is defined as pain on both sides of the body and above and below the waist. Are you also experiencing fatigue, brain fog, difficulty sleeping or changes in your mood. And then my own personal, very non-scientific question I find common amongst those with fibro. When you wake up in the mornings, do you feel like you've worked out even though you haven't touched a weight or been to the gym in years? Or worse, do you feel like you've gotten hit by a truck? Should you be on medications for fibromyalgia? The treatment for fibromyalgia is a whole other video and one actually I've done before, so I'll put the link in the description box. But suffice to say, there are some prescription medications that can help ease the pain and fatigue and give people just enough relief so that they can then focus on the many lifestyle factors that can further improve their pain. I found that many can be resistant to medications for fibromyalgia as some of the medications are closely related to antidepressants and deciding to start one feels like giving up or giving in to this idea that it's all in your head. It is absolutely not the case. These medications are related to antidepressants because of what we have learned about nociplastic pain and its relationship to neurotransmitters. It's not some sneaky way to get someone on an antidepressant. How to maneuver fibromyalgia while you are also still looking for a more traditional autoimmune condition can be tough. Two things can be going on at once. Someone could have an autoimmune condition and be experiencing nociplastic pain. In fact, it's very common and it is very tricky. Deciding to start treatment for fibro or nociplastic pain shouldn't mean you don't keep searching for an autoimmune condition but it does take vigilance and keen observation on your part. You really need to pay attention to your symptoms and specifically if you have different types of pain. Do you have muscle pain and soreness? Do you have joint swelling and stiffness? If you start a fibromyalgia medication, which symptoms specifically get better and which don't? All of this information is good for you and your doctor to help tease out what is what as you move forward. The pain of fibromyalgia is real and we are getting a much clearer understanding of what is happening. I encourage you to talk about the possibility of fibromyalgia with your doctor and discuss the medication treatment options that may be a good fit for you. And I also recommend investigating the many lifestyle changes that have been shown to help with fibro pain, specifically related to diet, sleep, movement, and community. I hope this has helped. If you liked it, it really helps us out. If you do all the things, share, subscribe, uh, like, all of that. And we'll see you next time.